Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you've seen on my channel, I've had a couple of videos using the LG 360 mounted on my Phantom 3 standard. I'm calling this my Phantom 360 at this point. Um, I'm going to show you the process of how do I transfer the data directly off the camera, directly to my PC, and how do I edit it, and then at the end, how do I get it all on YouTube, and how does YouTube recognize it, and how do we get everything worked out? So this is TK. Let's go ahead and check out the process. <music> So I'm gonna walk you through what I did to be able to get to actually getting the videos even done. Um, this is my Phantom 360, uh, sorry, this is the Phantom uh, 3 standard. There's no special thing about it other than the fact that it's the Phantom 3 uh, series. Uh, what I did here is I super glued a, a tripod mount that normally is a cold shoe mount uh, directly on the top. It's centered, as you notice, it's very, very strong and it works very well. And what it does essentially is it gives me the ability to keep it in between these propellers and as I'm flying it and going around, it turns and keeps the center. And I did it also as I for faced the button to the front making it uh, almost like a standard orientation as most of the 360 video, video that start recording start directly from this angle. Uh, that's the beginning part. And then for the video that I just did recently, I mounted it to the bottom using a 3N tape. Basically, same situation, mounted to the same unit, but taped to the bottom. And I realized between the two videos uh, that actually mounting it to the top gives me better stabilized video as when you're mounting it downwards with all the force and the wind that's coming down, the camera keeps shaking ever so slightly. Uh, oh, and the last thing I want to mention to you, I'm using a stabilizing bar and that's how I mounted it to the bottom as obviously I'm not mounting it to my camera, I'm not damaging the gimbal, everything in here is still the same. Um, and I've had really good success as far as getting it and basically very minimal mod to this. So. I know you're looking forward on how I'm doing my edits. Let's go ahead and switch over to the PC. Now that we're on the PC, the main thing you want to make sure is download the video on your PC. Uh, I downloaded the videos and I downloaded them in two different ways. The first way I downloaded it, I straight downloaded the video from the 360 camera to the OnePlus 3 using the software. If you're familiar with the LG 360 software, just download the video and then export that file from the OnePlus 3 directly to your PC. This file on the right side, you'll notice looks a little bit different even here in the preview. That was straight taken off the LG 360 using a, a USB Type-C cable directly to my PC. And I'll show you guys why I did it this way because I want to show you the reason that there is an important way that is you have to take it off the phone, uh, download it to the phone and then take it off. I'm using Adobe Premiere CC. I've imported my files directly to my, uh, into my timeline. Uh, it, there's no special way. You just basically uh, well, open it up right here and you just drag the videos. You drag them into your, directly into your information here and then you drag it into your timeline. Both videos will show up on your screen. You'll notice audio, video, and you can see them. Uh, the main thing you wanna make sure that at least in the setup when you're turning it on, change the sequence and let, allow the sequence to adapt. So I've changed my sequence line. My sequence is at 2560 by 1280. And because of the fact that this is 360 video, when you import the footage into Premiere, it asks you if you wanna match the source and that's what you do. You can't mix video types, meaning going from 360 to standard, your entire video needs to be in 360. And then you go about editing it as a normal video. You notice here, and I can open up my audio, and you'll notice also is that it's the 5.1 surround sound, uh, that's what you're getting it here. Uh, editing it is no different than editing regular uh, video. You can just cut, uh, cut again, and I'm just showing you guys an example here. I'm just gonna delete, and we can bring them together and I had a transition, very simple, and it'll work. Problem again, our video here is not in the right orientation, but if you use the OnePlus 3 video as I showed you, you'll get it and it'll look like it's an open, uh, unfolded sphere. When you're doing this process, the main benefit here is that you can actually look at it and make, edit it. The other thing you wanna make sure here with Adobe is add the little, there's a new window here for 360, it says toggle VR display. So when you toggle VR display, you're gonna get change it. It changes into the actual view. This is how you view it on YouTube. This is how you would view it on your phone if you're looking at it. And you can actually you know, go around, pan. By default, when you first uh, import the video, for some reason, Premiere assumes that this is stereoscopic video upper and under, and so we'll click OK. The video looks funky. It has that centered part because it's not recognizing it correctly. You right click on the video, you go down to VR video setting, change it to monoscopic, and you can change the, uh, the monitor view as to from 90, I like to keep it to 180, as it gives us a, a bigger viewing angle to be able to view the video. Also, if you notice right away, in this video, the player, or actually the LG camera, did automatically adjust for the fact that I made the camera upside down. Uh, and I say that because as you notice, as I'm going through the timeline here, the video is all right side up, there's no concern. But when I go in here, 
when I export it directly from the camera onto the USB Type-C camera, the video is upside down and I'm gonna have to go in here and go into my editor and I'll go in under footage here and then I'm gonna have to go in and change the orientation for that footage to be able to make it functional. Uh, but it does actually work in the sense of it gives us the ability to see the spherical view but the, the stitching is just extremely, extremely bad. Uh, again, nothing major here. You just go ahead, edit, uh, do the transitions. Uh, you can do audio control, uh, audio modifications. You can adjust, uh, gain, reduction. Can't really work, uh, well, it doesn't work really well with adding uh, 3D points. You have, I have to still work on that to figure out where to add these things. But overall, if you try to add like an overlay or anything, it ends up basically showing up in a funky place in the video, either dead center, and if you try to put it at an angle, it almost never shows. So just be aware, this is just the beginning part of how I'm getting this. It's hopefully gonna get better as time goes on. Very, very simple. And then as you're exporting the video, which is the last part that you wanna make sure to make, you know, cover here, you go export, media, in the tab, this is no different than normally exporting video. Make sure you're going in an MP4 format. So for me, I'm going YouTube 1080p HD, H.264, it's the format. Uh, it is saying 1080p here, but I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna say monoscopic. And then we'll go ahead and export uh, the video. Uh, normally, if you're exporting it to matching the source, it will go ahead and match it. So it'll say match source, you'll notice here and it'll go to 2560 by 1280, and that's the resolution that it needs to be for it to export the video correctly. So make sure you change the resolution to match the source, make sure you set that it's set at VR, and this will add the metadata directly into the file, go monoscopic, and then export once it's done, upload it to YouTube. If for any reason you did not have that functionality, I mean, the editor that you're using doesn't have VR mode, you do need to download this uh, special media metadata injector. Now, it's a free application you can download directly from YouTube, Opening it up is very simple. When you open up the application itself, it's going to ask you to find video. So you say import, uh, sorry, you say open. You go to the desktop. For me, at least, this is where my videos are. And this is the original file. I've already tested it, which says injected. I'm going to use, uh, we'll, we'll, well, actually, let's go in here. I have another folder here. So we're going to use this video, the one that doesn't have it, and I'm going to say open. And then all you have to do is check the box here and say inject metadata. And it's going to give you the same name with the word injected. Give it a second, same file name. It'll regenerate the exact same format. It doesn't edit anything. All it does is just adds the metadata into the file. Once it's done, you'll have that second file sitting for you, ready for you to be able to upload to YouTube, and you're pretty much done. Process isn't that complicated. There's just a few steps you want to be aware of. Transfer the video directly to your phone from the LG360 camera and use the footage from there on your PC. You'll get the best experience and you'll see exactly how it's right there in the background. It opens it up. It's kind of like it unfolds the 360 video into a rectangular shape video. You can go through the editing process and then do all the things that you want. But if you're using Adobe Premiere CC, that's the other reason why I like the software. Now with the recent update, actually as of uh, maybe three or four days ago, we're able to edit VR videos directly within the editor. So you no longer have to worry about it. And you can also embed the metadata in directly into the video as you're exporting it, where it used to be an additional step for me, at least when I did it for the first video for you guys. I had to export the video and embed the metadata using the, the metadata injector directly from YouTube, then upload it. The last thing you want to be aware of, uploading 360 video requires time. It's not just the time to upload it, but it's also the time for it to process. So most videos will process for like 1080p, you know, 720p, and all the different resolutions, but the way the process with 360 videos, at least on YouTube, it requires an additional amount of time. So what I would recommend you is upload the video, keep it private till it's done rendering. And when you're able to see that the, the controls for 360 are on, you'll be able to then make it public and then make all your edits and comments and everything on that on YouTube. So overall, a very comprehensive uh, process. Hope you guys watched it through the end because it gives you all the details as throughout the video. Uh, I'm glad to be able to share this with you guys. It took me a long time to figure out how to do this as there's almost no resource on the web right now to do this, specifically for the LG 360 camera. Um, as LG decided for the price point, they weren't gonna give us any software to be able to use with this. Like and subscribe as usual. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you very much for the support and I will see you guys in the next one. Initial thing, it says let's get started. It says swipe left for widgets. So we'll go ahead and swipe to the left. Front facing camera. Fingerprint sensor is at the bottom. And again, this isn't a button, it's a